Hey everybody, welcome back to Dale's Outdoor Adventures if you followed my journey on the Camino in 2019. If uh, you are new here, you're probably thinking about walking the Camino yourself and you're wondering about gear. What should I take with me? Well, I did walk the Camino and I'm going to show you all that. So, first of all, I envy you. Those that are that you that are getting ready to go, you're in for an incredible experience. You're going to meet people from all around the world and um, the views are tremendous. The towns are historical. It's an adventure I know I'll never forget. So let's get to the gear, what I took with me, what I would take with me next time, what changes I would make, and uh, maybe it'll help you as you plan your journey on the Camino this coming year. A brief recap of my hike in um, 2019. I started from St. Jean Pied de Port and I started on September 2nd. To get to Santiago de Compostela it took me 32 days, 30 days hiking, then I took one day off in Burgos and one day off in Leon. I did do videos every day on my trip and I will put a link to that playlist in the description of this video. It comes out to over 10 hours of video altogether. And um, I also did a pre-Camino gear list, what I was taking with me. If you wanna review that, that's in that playlist so you can see what I was thinking before I left versus what I'm thinking now having the experience that I did. After Santiago de Compostela, I did spend two days there and then went on to Finisterre, which was a three-day hike. Then I spent a couple days there. Then two days up to Musia, where my Camino was ended, and I was sad. I did miss my friends. I still miss them, but we do keep in touch a little bit by messenger and on WhatsApp. And that brings me to another thing. If you're from the States, WhatsApp is not a big thing here. We use different messaging system usually, but I would download WhatsApp on your phone before you leave because people from all over the world do use that and you'll be able to keep in touch with your friends that you meet on the Camino through WhatsApp. All right, so on these two tables, this is all the gear that I took with me on my Camino voyage. I'll go through all this and tell you what worked for me, what didn't, and why some of this stuff is here. So here we go, I'll start with my backpack. Hey, the pack I took with me was the Osprey Exos 48. You don't need a 48 liter pack for the Camino. But I also do pack, backpacking trips, and this year I'm going to attempt to through-hike the entire 2,193 miles of the Appalachian Trail. So I needed a larger than a 38 or so liter backpack, but that would suit you for the Camino. But this is a very light pack too, and there's nothing wrong with taking a 48 liter pack with you, or even larger. But you just don't want to fill it up with a whole bunch of gear that you don't need simply because you have the space. Um, Osprey does have one of the best warranties you'll ever find. If you mail the pack back to them, they'll fix anything for any reason as long as you own the pack, that's forever. So I actually did get some uh, holes in this mesh pocket in the back of the pack. I mailed it to Osprey, they put this patch on for me. They put a couple other patches on here for me where I had developed holes. The reason I developed these holes was my fault. I actually used these carabiners to hang these flip-flops off of here. These flip-flops, have Velcro, and the Velcro as I was walking was going back and forth like this, and it eventually wore a hole through that mesh. Once I figured out what was going on, I pinned it down more like this, and they stopped, weren't floating around in the backpack, and that stopped. But Osprey, no questions asked, they fixed it. Really happy with this backpack. It weighs about two and a half pounds. Now this, and all the other gear that I'm gonna show you as much as possible, I'll put links down in the description. They're almost all Amazon links, where you can go read reviews, purchase it if it's something that you're interested in. So, um, love this backpack. Gonna use it on the Appalachian Trail. And it also has the airspeed in the back. So if you can see there, it doesn't rest directly on your back. So you have a little airspace here. And if you're hiking in warmer weather, it's really nice. It keeps your back from sweating as bad as it normally does with a backpack on it that's laying right up against your back. And so when you're on the Camino de Santiago, you're gonna need some way to hydrate yourself. You're gonna need to carry water with you. Some people do carry bladders. That definitely is not my choice because bladders, you have to completely stop, get it out of your backpack, refill it for the most part. Uh, a lot of people did carry bottles and that was probably the preferred method. This backpack um, has slanted pockets on the side. Let me show you what I mean. Almost all backpacks have these side pockets here and people can carry the water bottles in here. The problem is when you're hiking down the trail, you can't get the water bottle, you can't reach back there and get it out. It's very difficult. Osprey and some other brands have these openings on the side where you can slide it in here and the water bottle can hang like this. Then it's very easy for you to reach back there, grab it and pull it out when you're hiking with this on your back. 
Um, you don't want to be in a situation where you have to ask somebody to help you get your water bottle out or you have to take your backpack off every time you want to drink a water. But I also carry the bottle in the front. I'll link this water bottle holder in the description. It's really inexpensive and um, worked really well. This way I could just pop this thing off. So th this clip comes off and just fits right around these small, anything but the large, really large mouth, it'll fit right around there. And then it just clips right in here. So when I got to a water fountain, I could just clip this off, take the lid off and fill it up and pop it right back in here and I was ready to go. Same thing when I was on the trail, I could actually just lean this over and drink out of it just like this, where I could just take the clip off and drink out of it. Super easy, very inexpensive. And the way it attaches to your backpack is most of well, on these shoulder straps still have some sort of a clip here, like this part here. And you can just put it right on there, snaps right on. So I'll link this water bottle holder in the description. It, it was a great system for me and it worked really well. This is what the whole rig looks like when you're wearing it, right here. Um, I never had problems with it bouncing around too much. So uh, if you have problems with it bouncing around a whole lot, you might just wanna take a rubber band or something, rubber band, it, rubber band it here. But I didn't have that problem, it was never an issue for me. And the next item I took with me was a sleeping bag liner. I was traveling during a, the Camino during a part of the year when I was expecting it to be warm most of the time. And actually it was cooler than I thought it was gonna be, but this still worked quite well. Uh, link this down. This was called a Dimples Excel sleeping bag liner, 100% polyester. It worked fantastic. And a um, couple recommendations. I don't think they're even selling this on Amazon at the moment because they're out of stock. But I think it was about $20, but you have to check the link to be sure. And uh, some things I really liked about this was that you're getting pillows when you're staying in the albergues. And they have pillowcases on them, but you know, these pillows aren't washed that often. This has a a compartment in here where you put the pillow right in and in addition i would recommend you get one that has a zipper like this one does all the way down the side like this so that you can zip or unzip it kind of throw it off yourself or on yourself because you're going to be hot sometimes um i did not carry a sleeping bag but uh i wouldn't hesitate to take a light sleeping bag like a 45 or 50 degree bag uh, you're going to be sleeping inside so you don't really need uh something like you would go backpacking with in the winter time but I thought I might be cold, so I did take this black diamond throw quilt. I might have used it one or two nights. They have blankets in almost every albergue, but not every one. Um, so black diamond throw quilt, I used it once or twice. If I went again, I probably wouldn't even take it. So that would cut about a half a pound off of my weight. This was my um, pack cover. Depending on your backpack, whether it's completely waterproof or not, you might want to consider taking a back, uh, backpack cover so that your things won't get wet. I uh, didn't use this very often. And the reason I didn't was I lined in, I put a big trash compactor bag and everything went inside of that, inside of my backpack. So the whole thing was pretty waterproof anyway. And then I would just roll the top up and then turn it over. If I had a rubber band, I would put it around the top and that kept everything from getting wet. I hardly ever used this. My pack would get wet in the rain, but it dries out super fast. It really doesn't hold any water. So uh, that's the system I used. I wouldn't even take this next time. When I left, I had about 20 of these things. These are like big diaper pins, and I had them just clipped onto the back of my backpack. I thought I'll use them instead of clothes pins because they're so light and they're easy to carry. But everywhere I went had clothes pins for the drying lines, so I never had to use these. I did use them, I think, to clip on some wet socks one time to the back of my backpack. Instead of taking 20, next time I would like to take two or three. All right, the shoes that I use, very important that you Find shoes that you like and that you try to hike with them at least 100 miles before you go. I think that's important. Opinions do vary, but these shoes worked well for me. These are Keen Targi Vents. They are not waterproof. That's on purpose. Waterproof shoes are great. However, once they do get wet and they're going to get wet inside, they don't dry out that fast. These dry out pretty quick. Another thing to keep in mind when you're buying your shoes is to get them oversized. You want at least a full thumbnail, a full thumb width, between your toe and the end of here. Otherwise, when you go downhill, your toenails will hit against the front of that shoe and you may lose them. They'll get black and blue and it is very painful. So another thing to keep in mind when you're starting on your long downhill stretches, try to tighten up your shoelaces if they're getting kind of sloppy or loose because you don't want your foot to keep sliding forward and hitting the front of that shoe. So I love these shoes. I'm gonna wear these on the Appalachian Trail again this year. And my backup shoes were these 
Tevas. This model is called the Teva Minum, which is a water shoe. It doesn't hold any water anywhere, so there's nothing that uh, really can get wet and stay wet. They have good arch support, as you can see. I really like these. These worked well. These were my town shoes, the shoes I wore in the albergues. You will need a second pair of shoes because they will not let you wear your hiking shoes in the albergues. They'll have a special place, usually near the entrance, where you take off and leave your shoes that you use on the trail. I think a lot of the reason for that is along the Camino Frances, for sure, a lot of sheep, a lot of cattle use these uh, trails. So, you know, they leave a lot of poop on the trails. So they don't want you wearing those same shoes inside. Trekking poles, highly recommend them. I might have used these things eight days out of all the days I hiked. But when I needed them, I needed them. I mean, they really help with the downhill, taking pressure off your knees and help with the uphill. I didn't use them during the level parts, especially like during the Masetta. And uh, I really like them. These are Black Time Diamond Trail Pro Shocks. They're not cheap, but you can get a lot less expensive hiking uh, poles for the Camino. And you can even just buy them in St. John and several other places along the Camino and get them when you're over there. Another problem with trekking poles is there's a problem taking them on airplanes. So you have to check your bags pretty much if you're taking trekking poles. Maybe not in every case, but in, I think leaving from the U.S., you're going to have to uh, for sure check your trekking poles probably most places all right frog tongs rain gear this is very inexpensive it worked well for me rain pants and rain jacket very lightweight i used it a lot in the mornings it was also great for wind um, i hardly ever wore the pants maybe once or twice only if it was extremely windy and raining would i put them on if it was chilly um, but the jacket i used almost every day really liked it it's inexpensive, um, less than $20 for the whole thing, and it comes in this pack here. I would take those again. I'm taking a different set of frog togs on the Appalachian Trail with me this summer. But, um, yeah, so they work pretty well. I would definitely use them again. People would take a bandana or a buff. I just took this here. This is one of those um, towels, microfiber towels that you buy, and you can soak it in the water and put it around your neck. It's supposed to keep you cool for a while. And it worked. Um, and I always had this hanging off my backpack so I could wipe my face, wipe sweat if I got feet got muddy or my legs got muddy from kicking up uh, rainwater on them or something. I could just wipe off real quick with this. So it wasn't my bath towel. I'll get to that in a minute. But it was just like my on-trail wipe up anything towel. This was a Sawyer Squeeze water filter that I took with me. I intended to use this. I never used it once. So... Sawyer, this is good, uh, and there's a lot of debate about is some of the water in some sections of the Camino making people sick. Uh, I don't think it is, and I drank it, and I intended to use this, but I never did. Wouldn't take it next time. Water bottles, um, you can buy them all along the trail. You take them with you, whatever suits you, so they work well for me. This isn't the actual hat that I took on the Camino because I lost that hat. And I think I left it in a bar in Tria Costella. So if you see a hat that's not that different from that, in Tria Costella, sitting in a bar, it might be. It's mine. This was a hat that I bought along the way on the Camino to replace the hat that I lost. So this is what I wound up finishing the Camino with. All right, this is a Columbia fleece. I used this in the mornings because it was usually chilly in the mornings. Then by 9 or 10 o'clock uh, hiking, you would take it off. But... um. It did the job, but I just don't like it. It's kind of fluffy and frumpy, and the backpack just doesn't sit on it real well. Next time, I would take something like a Patagonia R1 fleece or the old Navy Go, Go Warm hoodie. Something that's a little thinner, but still provides you with just uh, about the same amount of cold protection because it's more uh, technical in nature. And, um, yeah, I wouldn't take that next time because I just didn't like it the way the backpack sat on it. Talking about clothes. Um, I love these underwear. These are ex officio. They're expensive. I only wear them when I'm hiking. I don't even wear them every day because they're so expensive. But I love these things. They were, uh, I bought the nine inch versions and uh, they prevented all shave. They're really lightweight. And next time I would take four pair. I took three pair with me. And the reason I would take four pair is I don't like to do that laundry every day. So I'm willing to carry a little bit extra clothing so that I can wash clothes every four days. And I never once hand washed my clothes. I used the washers in the albergues. Some of them had dryers. Sometimes you had to hang in there on the line. But um, I didn't want to do laundry every day. It's, it's just an hour of your time every day that you have to do laundry. And now I could do it every four days in a machine. So I took one pair of gym, uh, gym shorts. That was to wear it mostly uh, in the evening, and 
I hardly ever wore them except when my clothes were being washed. I took one pair of Columbia shorts. I like these cargo shorts. And the reason I like them is because you always have to carry your Pilgrim passport and your regular passport. When you get to an albergue, that's the first thing they want. Your Pilgrim passport and your regular passport. And I would carry them down in this lower cargo pocket. And they would always be in a Ziploc bag. And then I had these front pockets to carry my small hiking wallet in. These are the same thing, only these are the zip-off long pants version. These all work fantastic. These are real lightweight so that they dry really fast on a clothesline. Darn tough socks. In order to keep my feet from getting blisters, I used quarter, um, one quarter full cushion darn tough socks. Darn tough socks, if you ever have a problem with them, you mail it back to the company. No receipt needed. They mail you a brand new pair back. But once again, not cheap. I only wear those when I'm hiking too. This is pretty worn out. I know you can hardly see what it says. It's called Sports Slick. It's a silicone-based um, application for uh, anti-blisters. And uh, I used to put this on my feet every morning, one time, and then I didn't do it again until the next day. And the way I, I would handle things, when I got to the Albergue at night, I'd take my shower. My shoes would already be in a rack outside, my hiking shoes. I would put this in the hiking shoes. I would also put in the socks I was going to wear the next day into my hiking shoes. That does a couple things for you. It makes it easy for you to get out in the morning. You already know your stuff is there waiting for you. And the other thing is if somebody goes to pick up your shoes, a lot of them look similar. They'll see, well, I don't have that stuff in my shoes, so the, obviously I've picked up the wrong pair of shoes. So hopefully they'll put it back. You will need some sort of a toiletry kit on the Camino. I just picked up this whole travel toiletry kit from Walgreens. I just stuck in one like fold-up brush that's in there. And a pair of nail clippers keep your nails trimmed on your feet so that you don't have them bashing into the front of the shoe and causing you problems this worked fine this is just basic european power adapter it had two usb ports i did because i was vlogging and videoing every day i had to take a battery back up and i did have to use this on the trail because i was filming over an hour a day of, of video and just earplugs this is a uh, rain leaf microfiber towel. This one is 24 inches by 48 inches. I found it to be just perfect for the showers. Super lightweight, dries out really quick too. And uh, that'll be linked down. I used um, a headlamp because almost every day but by sunrise, I'd already been on the trail for somewhere between a half an hour, an hour and a half sometimes. So I did need this headlamp. Some people that get up later and only hike during daylight hours, they wouldn't need them. But yeah, I used it all the time, almost every day. These are just various cords for electronics. I did bring a um, bit of a first aid kit with me and it had all kinds of stuff in it. I didn't need any of that stuff. Next time, I wouldn't bring any of it except for maybe vitamin I, ibuprofen. So you will pass pharmacies, sometimes many pharmacies, almost every single day. So all that stuff is there. They have everything that we have here in the States and in, in most countries. So. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to bring a big first aid kit with you. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Other people's opinions will vary. And, of course, if you have certain health issues where you need medicines, it might be different for you than it was for me. On the outside of my pack, I would carry this Ziploc bag. It had a little bit of toilet paper in it, and it had wet wipes or wet ones in it. So uh, only once during the whole time I was hiking was I out in the woods, and I had to use the bathroom, and there was no toilet. So... Bring the wet ones with you. Just make sure you bring an extra little bag. You see that extra Ziploc bag I have in there because you don't want to leave your toilet paper out there. Honestly, bring it, pack it back in, and when you go through town, just drop it in a trash can in a Ziploc bag. So I uh, highly recommend you bring the wet ones, though, because you don't want to be churning butter back there, if you know what I mean. So you want to make sure you are completely clean when you are done. One other thing you're going to need to bring with you is some sort of a bag I had this bag here, just an inexpensive light bag. And that's so when you go into the bathroom to take your showers, you can take all the your toiletry kit with you. You want to bring your wallet with you and your valuables with you. And what I wish I had brought with me, but I didn't, was just a little S-hook because some of the uh, shower stalls would have a place to hang this up. The majority would, but some did not. So if I had a little S-hook that just went through here and then hooked over the top of the shower stall, I could have hung it up. I actually had to wind up finding the driest spot in the shower I could to set it on the floor. So that's how it worked for me. This was a lightweight hiking wallet that I brought with me. Um, I'm going to use this on the Appalachian Trail this year. The problem with this hiking wallet was 
It doesn't fit the bigger, like 50 euro bills. When you're getting your money out of the ATMs over there, you're gonna wind up getting some 50 euro bills. And this wallet was too small, but it fits US bills just perfect. Just fold them in half. But even the euros uh, had to fold it in a quarter. So it's just a little awkward, but it worked. And um, next time I would just take one that was a little bit larger so it could fit the, uh, the euros. I didn't leave with an umbrella, but I actually bought a umbrella, I think in, I think it was Burgos for, it was only three euro. Umbrellas are great out on the trail, okay? And um, if you can take a little cord lock system, you can actually attach it to your backpack so you don't even have to carry it, it'll be hands-free. But if the if it's not windy, but it's raining, umbrellas are great because then you don't have to put on that hot um, rain gear that, uh, you know, for hot days, you won't have to sweat to death inside. You can just carry the umbrella, worked fantastic. And I would definitely carry an umbrella next time. I'm actually carrying one on the Appalachian Trail this year. It's uh, pretty popular with uh, hikers now that carry umbrellas. Now my shirts, I took three shirts with me. Two tech shirts that are super light. Um, any tech shirt will do. And I took this Columbia hiking shirt. It's called an Omni Shade Sun Protection shirt. This I loved, these I liked. Next time I would take two of these shirts and only one of the t-shirt style tech shirt only because these were looser and cooler and um it just felt better um wearing these than it did with these sometimes these i would get a little hotter than these than i would in the uh in the button down shirt this was a t-shirt i actually bought over in spain only so i had something else to wear and i could do laundry less that way i could put on those gym shorts i showed you earlier in this t-shirt and just wash every three days I had three pair of underwear, so every three days I would have to find some way to wash my clothes. When you're going over to without the Camino, if you're flying, you're probably going to have to find some way to take your backpack. Now, if you're taking trekking poles with you, you're probably going to have to check it. This bag, I understand it's also sold at Ikea, and I'm going to put a link where it's sold at Amazon. It was a two-pack of them, I think, for 11 bucks. So what I did was, when I got to St. Jean, the Hospitalero at the first albergue, I told him I wanted to get rid of this bag because he wanted to oh, definitely. So he took it. So I didn't have to carry this weight. I think it's six ounces on the Camino. Also, this one has a backpack. So when you're leaving the airport and going out to the cab, you can wear it like a backpack with your backpack actually inside it and your trekking poles. So I had to find a way to get home. So in Santiago de Compostela, before I was flying out, I went to a Chinese store. Somebody told me to go to the Chinese store. I bought this huge duffel bag, which fit my entire backpack and all my gear in it. And I used that to fly home. I think it was $18 US. But now when I go to fly up for the Appalachian Trail, I'll have it this year. But um, obviously I'm not gonna carry it out on the trail. It's too heavy, too much weight. So, so my total pack weight when I left was 15.8 pounds when I started my walk. That's 7.2, yeah, 7.2 kilos. So I was very comfortable with that weight. I had trained with actually a little bit more weight. Now that doesn't include the water. So um, add on two liters of water and that's roughly four more pounds. So I was carrying roughly 20 pounds. For me, that was easy. But uh, I'm a six foot guy that weighed uh, about 204 pounds when I started, 189 pounds when I finished. So I did lose a little weight, about 15 pounds on the Camino. Just for all this gear, some of it I think I mentioned in the video, but all of it can be found in the links at the bottom. I think I covered almost everything in those links. So. Um, yeah, you can find the prices if you click the Amazon link. And that way you can look at reviews from other people that have used this gear and get their opinion also. So if you're hiking the Camino, I'm really hoping you enjoy yourself and Buen Camino. I hope you'll follow me along and subscribe. And once again, I do have a playlist on, that you can find on my channel of my voyages on the Camino de Santiago. So 2020 is the Appalachian Trail for me. I know I'll get back to the Camino again, but I'm not sure exactly when. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, and if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. So this is my kitty, and you're going to meet lots of kitties and dogs on the Camino. So if you really like them, maybe take a little thing of cat treats with you or something. You'll have best friends all up and down the Camino.